Hey dudes, it's Erica with Not Your Average EDC, and somebody asked me to make a video about like blade steels, edge types, um, blade shapes, all that good stuff. So I figured I'd throw them all into one video and try to touch upon all of that and just kind of have a discussion about um, carrying multiple blades for EDC and for work, what that would look like, what your best bet is. So let's um, hope that the dogs don't ruin this and Kane, Stop drinking. Um, Kane has a drinking problem. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. So there's basically four main ways of carrying multiple blades, right? So we have like your folders. We have fixed blades. We have traditional, you know, like slip joints slash Swiss army knives. So um, whether that's like an old school slip joint case or um, one of these Victorinox Swiss Army knives, or even like um, Buck makes some like really old school little pocket knives that are like lockbacks or slip joints sometimes, but just like secondary blades, right? Little secondary blades. And then we have our, you know, multi-tools with pliers and stuff that also have a blade. So your Leatherman's, your Victorinox multi-tools that have, um, a blade or maybe even two on them. This one has, I think, just one kind of like backup blade, right? So we have, we have four main, yeah, stabbies. We have four main stabbies, right? Four main ways of carrying multiple blades. Um, there are a few reasons that you may want to carry more than one blade. Uh, number one, you might just blow through your edges really quick. Number two, you might just enjoy having kind of like a backup knife, um, almost like something that you always keep pristine and razor sharp in case of an emergency. Like sometimes, for instance, um, you know, we might let our main blade go a little dull. Uh, maybe we just haven't had time to sharpen it, but at least you have something in your pocket as backup that's like literally a razor and God forbid you're driving home and there's an accident and you have to cut somebody's seatbelt. Um, at least you have something, you know, razor sharp, ready to go for, for that type of instance. Or you, you know, you're driving home and you see an animal stuck in a fence. Um, I, these types of things I have actually experienced. Uh, having, having a razor sharp edge always on the ready is really good. Um, finding animals tangled up in fishing line and rope, that is not, um, a super rare occurrence, especially around here. That has happened to me before. So having something super, super sharp on the ready in case your main blade isn't a razor, good idea. Um, and some people, you know, the third option is some people just like to have different um, options. You know, maybe you like having different blade shapes in your EDC. Maybe this type of blade shape or this works really well for cutting your apples at lunchtime. And um, you, then when you go back into work, you clock back in, uh, you're doing some pretty pretty heavy cutting, some light drilling, some light prying, right? And you can't do that with this. So there's, there's tons of reasons why you would wanna have more than one blade. There's tons of reasons why my dogs are driving me nuts right now per usual and they won't stop playing. So of course, we're gonna go off topic for a second and I'm just gonna move somebody somewhere. Mr. Kane. Guys, you're not listening. They literally don't give a flying fladoodle. Also, the, the one on top is a girl. She thinks she's in charge. Um, what am I doing here? Okay, yo, not okay. Let's get you out of here. Okay, vlog, we're vlogging, get out. Oh boy, and we're spinning. So that dog that you just saw is Nicole's. Her name is Romy, and she's Cuckoo Baby. She's also officially locked out for the video. Okay, let's get back. Let's get back here. Not gonna edit that out. Real life happens, and no, I won't be editing it because I'm a real life human. Okay? The videos aren't meant to be perfect. Okay, so back back on track here. So there's, there's tons of reasons why you would want to carry different blades. Um, I carry multiple blades, up to four blades at a time. 
And um, the reason for me is kind of a mishmash of all of the reasons I mentioned before. So right now, at my job, um, I like having a kind of slicier knife for um, the produce and the boxes and anything that needs kind of like some thinness behind the edge, right? I have some something like that in my pocket, usually a folding pocket knife. And then lately, my secondary blade is something a little more rugged. So maybe something with a little bit of a tip on it, right? Not as slicey, uh, just a little more robust. You guys will tend to see like a mini A100 in my pocket at times, same thing, very robust tip, very strong capable of prying. I mean, just the other day we had to puncture oil tins when transferring oils. We needed a sharp but but robust tip to get through those cans. And I tried to do it with the Delica and it in the, you know, it just broke. Like the edge was just like literally crumbling. So having something like this for me or this is really important because I do some puncturing tasks at work and I really need that type of tip. Uh, on that knife and just like kind of a beater edge, right? Um, and then you, you guys know, I always have a Swiss army knife and a multi-tool on me for many reasons that I've explained in other videos. And those just come with these types of blades. And these are great for, uh, if you're working side by side with someone and they need a blade and you don't want to give them your, you know, $200 folder, just chuck them a $30 Swiss army knife with a decent edge good to go, right? Uh, easy to fix if they chip it, if they break it, if they roll it, super easy to fix. Y you can buy these all over the place. Again, pretty replaceable. So like having those types of blades on the ready, really good idea. The reason I wanted to make a video about this though is because I have noticed, especially as of late, that having different edges on these different blades really gives you a wide array of uses, right? So if you're into sharpening and steels and edge geometry, this is totally gonna be a video for you. If not, just skip it because I'm, gonna, I'm about to nerd the F out, okay? So here's what we have here. We have some, some steel here like this. So this is 154 CM from Emerson. This is a, um, kind of like a lower spectrum steel. It is, it is not a super steel. It is not um, an expensive steel. This is not something that, um, it, it is not in the tier of like M390, S90V, MagnaCut. Like it's just not up there. It's kind of old school, right? And uh, 154CM can take a toothy edge but you really have to stop working on it at a very low grit. So I'm talking like a coarse DMT stone. Like if you want this to have tooth on it, you're gonna be sharpening it on a blue coarse DMT stone and stopping there. Because the moment you start to move up with this, it wants to polish and get glassy, okay guys? So this, this steel, for instance, is one where it's ju it just doesn't want to stay very toothy. It'll cut for a long time with a little more of like a, a smoother edge, but um, it just, it enjoys being polished. <laughs> it enjoys very much so um, getting a nice little strop and becoming pretty, pretty polished. So for me, I like having a toothy edged knife and kind of like a silky cutter almost. Because then you can really cover all of your bases with those knives and you know which knife to go to for which ta for whatever task you have. So um, like for example, if you wanna carry something that is kind of thin, slicey, glides through cardboard and packages easily, you could take something like this, a very thin Delica, you could take something like this, polish the edge, and have like just a laser beam of a refined movement through your materials. 
But then if you also encounter tasks where you need a little bit of bite, so for me, I like to have more bite when I'm working with rope or um, fibrous materials. And there are just some things where you go to cut and you just need a little bit of grit, right? Like we all know that. Um, so you could, you could carry a different knife maybe a fixed blade or another folder, what, whatever, and have a toothier edge on it. So like you could literally bring your slicey knife to um, a mirror polish on a strop with like some white compound and have this be like your laser beam slicey dicey one. And then you could have kind of like your backup badass robust knife with a real toothy edge on it, uh, nice and robust, ready to do kind of like the more hard work and it'll be ready for it. So this, this knife in particular is a mini Kephart from BGM Knives. This one is in Nitro V Steel, which takes a really good toothy edge. You can polish it, but um, this gets very bitey and gritty. And it also uh, is just very forgiving. It's very strong. It's very tough. Uh, Nitro V is one of my favorite steels. And just this model in general, it, you know, you have a good amount of width for, for slicing, if need be, really good cutter, but also just an absolutely robust pry bar tip, right? So if I keep this toothy, if I, you know, if this goes dull and I run it through, through like a couple DMT stones, uh, a coarse, a fine, an extra fine at most, and keep this really toothy, some really good grit and bite to it, you can conquer almost anything with this set. And then if you're a complete worker and nerd like me and you carry those kind of like extra blades, you can do whatever you want with these two and have one be polished and one be toothy or both be toothy. You can do whatever you want, but there's like infinite possibilities for cutting and, um, I think part of the reason people get so obsessed about steels and the trendiest and what's the best is because a lot of people uh, want to carry like one knife that does it all. And can you find that? Yeah, I, I guess you could. Um, I did it for a long time. And I even recall myself like kind of um, throwing a little bit of shade at, at people that carry like multiple folders at the same time and stuff just because I thought it was like useless. But now that I'm in a situation where I really do blow through edges, uh, I am finding it enjoyable to have multiple, multiple blades here. So, um, you know, part of, part of like trendiness and companies is they're always trying to find like the best of the best though, the one and only, the fantastic, all you need, um, magna cut. <laughs> And they, and they say that it'll do everything you need it to do, but the reason people are flipping knives all the time and getting new knives all the time is because that one knife isn't doing everything that they want it to do. And honestly, a lot of these people don't even know how to sharpen or take care of their blades. So like, it goes dull and then they're like, well, that went duller than I thought it would, uh, faster than I thought it would. I don't know how to take care of this. This isn't as good as I thought it was. On to the next one. And it's just this repeated revolving door cycle of always getting new knives that you're going to use for a little bit and then get rid of or get bored of because you do, you're not bringing it to its full potential. And, um, you know, carrying two blades, one with a, one with a toothy edge and one with a fine edge is awesome. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You have a lot of capability. Uh, it is really cool to see what steels do the best with a, uh, a fine edge or a toothy edge. Some can do both. Um, this crewware in particular came with a factory stupid toothy edge, like from Spyderco, just ready to shred. And I did use DMT stones the other day and green compound on a strop and white compound on a strop. And now she's got a mirror polish and um, not as much tooth, but very much a refined laser beam, slicey dicey edge. So like 
carry more knives if you want. Um, I just hope that you actually learn to sharpen them and strop them and, and use them because if you're carrying five knives in your pocket and you're not even the, using the first one, lame. You're silly and you're the type of person I was laughing at from the beginning. But if you're somebody who's using your knives so much that they go dull throughout the day, me, um, and you really do need more than one blade, dude, try doing some different edges. Leave, leave a slicey dicey and then leave an, uh, a toothy and try it out and see what you think. It's a lot of fun. And um, even when you get into different blade shapes and geometry, like it is really fun to play around with edges. I have this Bark River here that is um, very, very thin. This is uh, a lightweight Fox River. So pretty darn thin convex edge, uh, 3V convex edge. And I have gotten this so sharp that it like literally whittles hairs and like you touch your arm and the hairs are actually popping off. So like that type of edge is so thin and so sharp that like, this is a save the day type of knife here, man. This is, this is a beast, uh, so freaking sharp. So I encourage you guys to play around with steels. Don't necessarily follow what's trendy because if somebody's trying to tell you that the new steel that they have found is the best of the best and you're never gonna need anything else and it does everything, they're probably wrong. And um, you, it, I have found it for myself very hard to have a super toothy and super polished edge at the same time. Like that has not existed for me yet. And I'm not exactly sure if it does like having a reflective edge that has brutal bite to it. I'm just not quite sure if you can do that to that point. So having one of one and one of the other is really fun. Um, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Let me know if you carry multiple knives. Let me know if you carry multiple edge types. Um, yeah, we even have like chisel grinds and convex grinds, and regular grinds, and hollow grinds, and flat grinds, and all the craziness. It's so fun. There's so many different options. But let me know what you guys carry down below. Let me know what your job is. Let me know why you have to carry what you carry. Maybe you only carry one knife. Maybe you're a knife nut like me, and you have four blades on you all at the same time for different things. Who knows? But discuss it down below. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions and go use your shit. Go buy a mini cap heart from BGM and use it as a digging tool out in your garden in the summer. And then go buy a Delica and crew wear. Actually you can't, they're discontinued and they were exclusive. Fuck exclusives. That's a different video that I will be making. Okay, but anyway, go buy like some crew wear and go, I don't know, cut some, cut some shit that needs a really fine, sick edge. And then go field dress a squirrel with a convex 3V and then go whittle some wood out in the forest and use your shit with some like, I don't know, this is probably some type of 440 stainless, right? Go do that. Go do all those things and use your motherfucking shit and don't be afraid. Have a good day, guys. See you on the next one.